The riders stirred at first, murmuring with approval of the words of Saruman, and then they too were silent, as men spellbound. It seemed to them that Gandalf had never spoken so fair and fittingly to their lord. Rough and proud now seemed all his dealings with Theoden, and over their hearts crept a shadow, the fear of a great danger, the end of the mark in a darkness to which Gandalf was driving them, while Saruman stood beside a door of escape, holding it half open so that a ray of light came through. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we are taking a look at the power and capabilities of the wizard Saruman the White, head of the White Council and Order of the Wizards, and how and why he was so powerful. Sources for today's video are in the description and cards, my friends. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's begin our tale. Without diving over much into his backstory, which can be found in my epic character history about Saruman, he was a Maya under Aule and had power and skillcraft. While there was not really a Vala of knowledge or wisdom in all things in Middle-earth, as each Vala had knowledge pertaining to different topics, to Aule was given wisdom and knowledge about his domain, that of the physical and material world and its different powers. I must account him as probably being one of the smartest of the Valar. Now in Tolkien's works, knowledge and wisdom play interesting roles. Some of the most powerful characters, and those seen as beacons of morality and goodness, do have a great deal of knowledge and wisdom that continues even to expand throughout the story. Gandalf, Galadriel, Melian, Celebrimbor, and others had wisdom, knowledge, and were good-hearted folk, yet they had not so much knowledge, especially of the works of the enemy, that they fell to evil themselves, as it seems to be almost a theme that too much intelligence, too much knowledge, can lead one down a dark route. The same may not be said of Kurumo, who did always think very highly of himself and his own power. It does seem that both Sauron and Saruman, at least in what we know from the story, their greatest magic was in their crafts and their ability to control and manipulate others. But the similarities do end there, as Sauron held little to nothing back, and he was a warrior, a shape-shifting manipulator, one who brought some kingdoms of elves and men to ruin. Saruman had different plans and would use his power accordingly. So let's get into his true power and magic, but if you are curious about Saruman's plan to win the battle for Middle-earth, please check out my video on that. Saruman was charismatic and full of social power when he controlled the situation. Perhaps Saruman was even one of the most charismatic characters in Middle-earth ever, next to Anatar, the Lord of Gifts. He was knowledgeable, even having the epithet the Wise, which contributed to that power of his, and I must imagine that his magic fueled his utter charisma. For centuries, Saruman established himself as the greatest ally one could have in Middle-earth, one full of connections and power and, of course, knowledge and good counsel. This persona allowed him the mastery of Orthanc, given to him by Gondor, as they wished to maintain that sort of alliance with him, and of course he would take over an outpost that they really couldn't manage to keep anymore from the Dunlendings. But for Saruman, this helped him accumulate far more lore about the world and works of all, including those of Sauron, from his home base. So I believe he fueled any sort of metaphysical power he controlled into his charisma and intelligence, neglecting hard magic that would have been beneficial to him in combat, that one such as Aonwe or others might have had, for a softer sort of magic that helped him in different ways. To that end, I must say that his use of magic and power seems always far more subtle than even that of other Maiar. Perhaps he could have been formidable in combat if he wanted to be, but honestly, throughout the Legendarium, we never really see it. Instead, he was really good at talking and was incredibly smart. Obviously, that's a simplification, but essentially, that's true. He would even try to forge his own ring of power, but I don't really believe it did much for him other than it being a project for his own vanity. Saruman does show us other instances of his powers beyond his voice and knowledge of craft as well, such as his corruption of Theoden over time through Grima, assuming he or his power did play a part in that, or his disguise when he went to the edge of the Fangorn Forest and came upon the Three Hunters. While he did have some skill here in an illusionary way, his greatest powers were still his knowledge and his voice, even though both were susceptible to his greatest weakness, which was his ego or self-centered nature. Now, I must imagine that this is true, and that this was his greatest power, as it was the power he most put forth when he no longer had any reason to hold back based on the rules of the Valar. He joined with the very shadow he was commanded by the Valar to combat, 
And in doing so, he broke the rules that the Valar set upon him already, making a situation for himself similar to that of Sauron. He no longer had reason to hold back and limit his own power. Now, the power of his voice in a fantasy setting with other types of magic may actually seem a little thing to choose. Yet the power to persuade and command others, especially in the context that we get in Middle-earth during the late Third Age, when Saruman came to command thousands of orcs and Urukai and Dunlandings, that power would have been one of the most important to have at one's command in Middle-earth. This also made him appear as a different sort of character within the text, especially as a villain. Sauron obviously also possessed control of a greater amount of forces. With the ring, though, he himself was a greater threat on the battlefield, and his rule was still more oppressive than coercive in nature. He was still a bigger threat than Saruman. But the former white wizard, the wizard of many colors, was a great threat of his own right, second only to Sauron, and he would have been catastrophic for the West if he had been ignored, so he wasn't. Again, his voice only worked if there were those that were truly willing or even open to hear it and heed it. And his knowledge was only helpful if he had the resources, material or otherwise, to use it to its full potential. His ego was always his downfall, of course, and that proved fatal to his powers in the end. His army was crushed by the courage of a people he had underestimated and failed to understand. And by ignoring the will of the Fangorn Forest in pursuit of material wealth to expand his army, Saruman also ignored the force of nature, though he was certainly smart enough to know that that downfall was possible. Therefore, his power was only as great as his biggest blind spot, and since we know of only two personal combat encounters that he was involved in, the assault on Dol Guldor and his murder by Grima, and it is not noted that he has used any combative magic in those situations or others, in the end, it seems that he was similar to a basic brigand with a knife when he tried to kill Frodo, and it does seem that his power or magic was very limited in that capacity, in the combative capacity. Even Gandalf showed more power and magic in his different combat encounters when fighting the Balrog or wargs or wolves than Saruman ever explicitly did. And again, since he had no reason to hold back, we can assume that Saruman didn't hold back, and yet he still didn't really possess combative magic, or at least much of it. If we can assume that Saruman did not possess that type of magic, he must have been a wizard that was far more into illusionary charisma and intelligence-based magic, whereas Gandalf had more of the combative fire and charisma magic, and Radagast had natural, elemental, and shape-shifting magic. But again, this is all based on assumptions from the lore concerning what kind of magic he does choose to use versus any potential magic that he actually never shows. But what do you all think? Was Saruman truly very powerful or magical, even in comparison with other Maiar? Or was he quite limited based on the magic he did choose to use? Let me know in the comments below. And so, we come to the end of our tale on Saruman's power. From this tale, we see that we must do what Saruman did not, and temper our strengths against our weaknesses to truly utilize our greatest capabilities. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. Let me know your thoughts about this in the comments below. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider getting some candles from our friend's mythology candles, or order some Wedder United Cutlery Lord of the Rings sword statues and other replicas from Castle Khan who does international shipping, and use the code WEST at checkout, and please check out our merch and Patreon. Thanks to our Valor Tier patrons and YouTube members, Peter Shepard, Blair Scott and Merton, John Hume, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Reese Jenkins, Arthur Merlin, Dale Davis, Kingswald Project, Theodore Moon Viper, Andrew Carlisle, and Zumi. Thank you so much to all of our patrons and YouTube members, it really means a lot. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today, and I'll see you all again next week with a video on what if a Sealdor had survived. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure, until the next one.